Welcome to Living Water Bible Fellowship. We hope that what you hear encourages you in your personal walk with Jesus Christ. Stay tuned afterwards for more information. Good morning, everyone out there in cyber world. Um, welcome to Living Water Bible Fellowship's online service. Uh, my name is Bo Hutchis. I want to thank you for being with us uh, today. Um, Any time that we have the opportunity to come and worship, whether we are in a church building, whether we are at home with our families, anytime we have the opportunity to come and worship, we come to worship God um, on his throne. We come to worship him as the true king of king and as the true Lord of lords. And the Bible is chock full of references to the kingship of God. It's full of allusions to the and teachings of the doctrine of the kingship of God. But explicitly, we see this in the book of Revelation, chapters 4 and 5. And this morning, as we open up our worship service, I want to read um, some portions of Revelation, chapter 4 and 5, to you. And these portions I'm going to read, they are responses of God's people to the character and nature of God. They see the magnificence of God. They see the glory of God. Uh, the worthiness of God, and they can't help but to respond. And I want to read some of those portions of Scripture to you as they should be our responses. When we look at the glory of God, when we meditate upon His worthiness, these should be our responses to what we see in the character and nature of God. This is Revelation chapter, chapters 4 and chapters 5 people of God, after they see the worthiness of God, say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, and who is, and who is to come. Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. And the shift focuses to Jesus Christ himself, and the people of God say this to Jesus, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain, and by your blood you have ransomed a people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priest to our God, and they shall reign on earth. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the land be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever and the four living creatures said amen and the elders fell down and worshiped may that be our our attitude this morning as we come before the throne as we come before the king to worship his name would you pray with me Our Father in heaven, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit to give you the worship that you so deserve, to give you the glory, to give you the honor, to give you the praise, the blessing, the wealth, the might, and the wisdom. You created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. And we come humbly as your people, as your creatures before your throne to worship you. Lord, you are full of power and you are full of glory, and you are full of wisdom and might. And we simply want to respond this morning through singing to you, through meditating upon you, um, through listening to your word preached. God, you are worthy, and we come to do our duty before you this morning to give you the glory and the, and the worthiness and the honor that you are so worthy of. We thank you for this time. It is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen.
the King of Kings. You are my everything. And I will adore you. I will adore you. Clothed in rainbows of living color, flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be. Your kingdom here. 
Father, we gather in your presence today by faith. Lord God, we, uh, we come here today, we come to meet you, we come to, to be in your presence, to be close to you, to draw near to you, to worship you, to exalt you, to give you the glory you deserve. God Almighty, uh, what can we say but thank you? Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you for salvation provided at the cross. Thank you for salvation offered freely. Thank you for heaven. Thank you for the kingdom to come. Thank you for your presence in our lives today. But God, you see where our nation is right now. You see where the world is right now. Nothing's taken you by surprise. Nothing is hidden from you. Lord, you've seen our, our, our four or five or six weeks in some cases of isolation now. Oh God, I bring to you the, the people of the church. Oh God, I pray for husbands and wives right now who are fighting the good fight. Oh God, I ask for grace upon them. I ask for your power, your might, your provision, your strength, your courage about for husbands and wives today. Lord, that they would be able to carry on, to keep fighting, to keep battling, to keep moving forward positively, strongly, boldly for the sake of them and their children. Pray for a health of marriages right now. Lord, it's, you see the strain and the stress that people are going through. Lord, fill homes right now with your spirit. Lord, those children that are all out of whack, trying to, to walk and, and, and obey parents and and trying to do what they need to do at school. And yet there's some fear and anxiety and worry about the future. Lord, meet these people in their homes right now. Meet, meet families. Meet grandparents. Meet those who are alone right now in the nursing home, quarantined. Meet them and tell them, Lord, we ask, we, we plead with you to tell them that you love them and that you're with them and you're not going to leave them or forsake them. God, we pray for our government right now, federal, state, local. We pray for good decisions. We pray for wisdom, for wisdom and discernment from, from heaven. 
Lord, as they would make good decisions and good choices, Lord, we, we ask for your favor and your blessing upon them as they decide when to lift the, the restrictions and when to move forward. We pray for uh, doctors and nurses and nursing home workers and, and people at the grocery store and our, our mail carriers. We, we pray for these people that are fearful right now pray for them and their families that you give them grace and strength to keep fighting and keep working and keep serving. We ask for your protection, Lord, that you'd keep them healthy and safe. God Almighty, we ask for your grace. Give us the perspective of heaven. Give us the perspective, the truth that you reign and you rule and that we're yours and that we are safe in your hands. Lord, bless this time as uh, we've gathered in your name for your, for your sake, for your glory. As we open up your holy word, we ask, Lord, that you speak to each one of us as you see fit. Lord, if the words of the preacher are not of you, let them fall to the ground and die. But, Lord, as your word is preached, change lives. Transform people as you see fit, because we are yours. We give ourselves to you again today. Lead on, O King. In your might, your authority, your power, Jesus, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Guys, it's uh, good to be with you again today. I don't know, I, I've lost track. Uh, I was tr- earlier this week, I was like uh, wondering what day it was. I lost track of how many Sundays we've been together like this. Uh, it's, it's five, I think, maybe, maybe six going on. I'm not exactly sure, but it's strange, and it's, it's uh, still not what we want. But guys, um, we'll get there. We'll get there. We're going to move forward in faith. We're going to move forward in power. We're going to move forward trusting in the Lord. Uh, I've been uh, looking forward to this day after Easter. We get to start a new sermon series today, the book of Acts. Uh, our church needs to hear the book of Acts. Our church needs to hear the Word of God today. Uh, in the coming weeks, I'm looking very uh, forward to all that God's going to say, the principles, the lessons, the teachings that uh, the Word has for us in the book of Acts. I pray that uh, uh, you would follow along, you would dive into the book, that you would ask the questions, Lord, what are you saying to me from your Holy Word? And so Acts chapter 1, we're going to just dump, jump right in today. Acts chapter 1, verse 1, um, and uh, I don't know how long we're going to be in the book of Acts, but I'm fairly certain that we'll be meeting again in person while we're in this book. <laughs> chapter 1, verse 1, in the first book, O Theophilus, I've dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering, suffering by, by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth." When he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who is taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven." Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it have been uh, uh, wonderful to be there and, and see the miracle of Jesus ascending into heaven? See him going up into that cloud, and some think that's the, 
the glory cloud, the Shekinah glory, going into God's presence. We learn a lot of things from the book of Acts. One of the things we learn for certain is that Jesus is coming back. He's coming back one day. This world is His. The kingdom is His, and He's going to bring the kingdom upon the earth. The time of His choosing, the time of the Father's choosing. But what I want to start with in the book of Acts here, it, you'll notice in, in, in verse 1 how Luke frames his, his account, his gospel. He says in the first book, and Theophilus, a lover of God, Theophilus, uh, a, a Christian, we believe, uh, Luke is writing to Theophilus and several Christians, reminding them of what has happened in the world. His first book was the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke was part one. This is intended to be part two of a two-part account. If you notice in verse one, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do. In the first book, I, I dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach. Isn't that interesting how that's phrased? Because in the first book, at the end of the first book, Jesus rose to the heavens. The implication of what Luke says here, I, 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 in the first book, it, all the things I, I wrote about, talked about what he began to do and teach. The implication is that this book, the book of Acts, is about what Jesus is continuing to do, what Jesus is continuing to teach. In other words, now that Jesus has gone to be with the Father in heaven, he's still active. He's still at work. He's still present. But we ask the question, how is he at work? How is he present? This passage and the rest of the book of Acts tells us the answer to that. Jesus is working today. He's teaching today. He's, he's making a difference in the world today. He's accomplishing his mission today today through His church. Through His church. We read through this passage, and uh, there, there's another thing that stands out to us, and it's going to be with us through the rest of our study. All that Jesus began to do uh, through his, his life, His death, His resurrection, His ascension, He continues on through the church and through the Holy Spirit. We, we read in this passage, and it stands out in several places, but in verse 4, while he was staying with his apostles, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. So Jesus, in his ascension, before his ascension, 40 days, Luke is the one who tells us that Jesus was with the church for 40 days after his resurrection. And what we envision is Jesus coming and going, appearing and disappearing. He's, he's here and then he's not. He's teaching. And we don't know how many times he showed up. We don't know how many times. We, we know from 1 Corinthians he came to individuals and he came to small groups and he came to even a large group at one point, appearing to 500 brothers at one time. And so he was active for 40 days. Uh, but here, in, in his last words, he said, Church, wait for the promise that I told you about. And, and in the Gospels, we, we saw several places. If, if you recall, the uh, Gospel of John, maybe the most famous area, chapters 14 through 16, Jesus says, I'm going, I'm going, but I'm going to send the Counselor. I'm going to send the Spirit. I'm going to send the Advocate to be with you. Jesus, church, is present. He's present today through everything that we're going through. He's present today in everything that's happening in the world. He's working here today. He's working in your home. He's working in your family, church. He's working in the body of Christ. He's working through the church and He's working through the Holy Spirit. His mission goes on. His vision for the kingdom goes on. It hasn't stopped. It hasn't ceased. It goes on. God's at work today. God's at work today in the world. 
Maybe you uh, haven't felt that or sensed that. Maybe you're wondering, what in the world is God up to? God, why are you letting this happen to my business? God, why are you letting this happen to my plans, my dreams? I had it all laid out. I had the three-year plan, and now everything's in shambles. I don't know when I'm going to be open again. I don't know what's going to happen again. I don't know if we're going to go on that vacation. I don't know if I'm going to see my child again in the next few months. What are you doing, God? Be assured as we start the book of Acts that one of the lessons we learn is that God is at work in His church. He's at work in the world. Jesus is at work through the power of the Holy Spirit in His people. He's at work. He wants to work through you. He will work through you. He's not going to stop. This... uh, this passage is, is fascinating in many ways. Uh, you know, his coming and going, his talking to them, his, his instructions. I, 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 I read the, about the ascension, you know, like, why, why, why is he lifting off? <laughs> you know, like, like a rocket leaving, leaving the earth. Well, I think that was for the apostles' benefit. You know, he didn't have to do it that way. He could have just disappeared. He could have just vanished. But then they wouldn't have known that he was actually gone. When he lifted up into heaven, they knew a new phase was about to begin. A new calling, a a new work. Jesus told them to wait. Wait for what? Wait for the Spirit. But why would they need the Spirit? Why would they need the power of the Holy Spirit? Why would they need God, the third person of the Trinity, in their lives, in their midst, in their work? Because God had work for them to do. God had a calling upon their life. Church, God has a calling on us today. A holy and righteous calling. A mission. A mission we watch how this unfolds. Uh, the, the book of Acts is this story. Uh, verse 8 is, is kind of a controlling verse. It, it says there, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You you flip back to the, the, the book of Luke real fast. Luke 24. This is kind of Luke's summary statement, a, a shorter statement of, of what the future would hold that he expands in Acts. But if you look at verse 45, Acts chapter 24, verse 45. This is one of the uh, you know, appearances. It's, it's put there, one of the last things. Then he opened his, their minds to understand the Scriptures. He said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer on the third day and rise from the dead, that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. So you put that passage together with Acts 1, and you put that, those passages together with the other Gospels and all the other great commissions that are present in the Gospels. We come to the conclusion that Jesus, we have to come to the conclusion that Jesus has a mission for his church. That Jesus has a purpose for his church. Jesus has a calling upon his church. If you are part of the church of Jesus Christ, he has a calling upon your life. If you've come to worship Jesus as your Savior and your Lord, he has a calling upon your life. My brothers and sisters, we are called to be witnesses. For Jesus. The apostles, for sure. They had been with Jesus for months and months, up to three years. They had learned his teachings. They had learned his heart, his his ethos, his pathos. They had learned who he was inside and out. They learned his, his love for the Father. They learned his love for the nations. Jesus says, you will be 
my witnesses. Now stop there and think about your calling and my calling as Christians, as believers, as followers of Christ. What does it mean to be his witness? The apostles saw him. They saw him walk the earth. They, they saw him live. They, they, they saw his sufferings. They, they heard his teachings. They saw his healings. They saw the miracles. They saw him crucified. They saw taken off that cross, laid in the tomb. The third day they saw him, some of them, that evening on the third day, they, they saw him alive. Jesus gave many convincing proofs. They, you know, they, we talked about that last week. He says, touch me, I'm not a ghost. Ghosts don't have flesh and bones. Here, I'll even eat something in your presence so you know that I'm not a spirit or a, or a vision. We are called the witness to the story, the grand story, the, the, the grand account, the grand meta narrative of the Bible, the truth that God once known. Last week was Easter. Do you remember what we celebrated on Easter? We had a lot to celebrate. Resurrection Sunday, we had a lot to celebrate, the resurrection. But what did it mean? What Easter is about, you guys, what the church is about. Is about the, the fact that God has accomplished salvation in Jesus Christ. That in Jesus, the Father has accomplished redemption. Redemption. We celebrated Easter, the victory of Jesus rising from the dead, overcoming the grave, not staying in the tomb. It was all about celebration and rejoicing that He had won, that He had finished the work. The work of salvation is finished. The work of making a way for reconciliation between men and God, women and God, has completed. It's done. Jesus said it is finished. I've won. I've done the work. The rule of God has come. The kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom is that now sinners like me Broken men and women like you. We can all be reconciled to God now because of Jesus Christ. We can come under the reign of the king. We can come under the rule of the master of the, of the whole world. It's accessible. It, it's, it's free. Trusting in Jesus, repenting of your sins, and trusting in Jesus brings us to the point salvation and rescue and deliverance. Jesus has done the work. He's finished the, the race. He's accomplished it. And now the church has the privilege. The church has the honor. The church has the calling to speak the message to the world that redemption has been accomplished. And you can come on in to speak the message to the world that the king has come the king has come, he's, he's died, he's risen from the dead. Now anybody who would come, anybody who hears the gospel, anybody who hears repentance and forgiveness of sins, they can repent of their sins, trust in Jesus, and be forgiven. This is our message. We have this, this great and glorious honor of inviting lost people to be found, inviting People far from God to draw near to God because Jesus has become the way. Jesus has opened the door. Jesus has said, I have the keys to heaven. Come through me and you will be saved. Come unto me, all you are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's our gospel. That's our good news. The gospel of the kingdom Jesus' kingdom is coming. That vision that, that Bo spoke about at the beginning of our service, about the, the, the great throne room scene of, of the Father, and then the great reception of the scroll, the plan of God, the Lamb receives the plan of God, and everybody falls down and worships because he was slain, and because he was slain, 
Anybody who trusts in his work on the cross can be saved. Man, that's our message, you guys. That's our passion. That's our zeal. That's our calling. We've been meant, we've been sent to be witnesses. We've been called by God to continue the work of Jesus. Jesus calls us. He equips us with the Holy Spirit to empower us to go near and to go far. To bring the good news to people that look like us and talk like us and and have the customs we have, but also to go far to people that don't look like us, to people that are unlike us. To the ends of the earth, Jesus said, I'm, I'm, I'm sending you to the nations. You'll be my witnesses to the nations. This is why we exist. Why does the church exist? What, what's, what, what, why does the church exist? Is it, is it just to meet and get into deeper truths? And is it just to get our needs met? No. My brothers and sisters, we are called to go. We're called to live for His glory. We're called to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ. And here's how it works. Remember in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, As I was sent, I am sending you. Our God is a missionary God. As I, have, as I was sent, I'm sending you. Our God is a sending God. And guess what? Jesus, if you read through the Gospels, He's empowered by the Spirit. Him, him becoming incarnate, coming down from heaven. There's a sense where there's times where, where he wasn't relying on his deity. He, he surrendered himself to the authority of the Spirit. As Jesus was empowered to go on mission, to come to the earth to save, to seek the lost, we are empowered to do the same work. Jesus today is working through men and women who are surrendered to his holy will. Jesus today wants to work through men and women who will be willing to be surrendered to His holy calling. We are called to glorify God, church. We are called to the glory of God, to the, to the praise of God, to make Him who is worthy known throughout the world as worthy. Jesus sends us into the world, hither and yon, <laughs> near and far, to people we're comfortable with, to foods we're comfortable with, to foods we're uncomfortable with, and people we can't even speak their language yet. He sends the church around the world to bring the good news of Jesus Christ. He has empowered us. He's commissioned us. He's given us the mandate of mission. The, the disciples, the apostles... When Jesus talked about going to the nations, I think they were probably shocked. I think they were like, what? And you see kind of their, their narrow focus in verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? They were thinking about their own people. They were thinking about, and rightly so, I mean, the gospel, the, the covenant came through the Jews, right? The, the, the knowledge of God came through the Jews. And, and so they had visions. They were taught by their prophets. One day an anointed one will arise. One day a son of David will come and he'll set the kingdom again. He'll bring the kingdom again. And, and so in their minds, that meant a territorial government that would be ruled by the Messiah who would get rid of all the foreigners who would get rid of the Romans, get rid of all the oppressors. And so they're like, oh man, he's talking about the spirit coming. He's raised from the dead. These are the end times because the end times for the Jews, this age and the age to come. The age to come was the age of resurrection. He started something. The age to come was the age of the spirit. When we get to to chapter 2 of Acts, uh, there's a long quote there of Joel 2 about the spirit coming. Uh, they're thinking they're thinking rightly to, to the, a certain degree, but their vision's too small. Jesus, are you going to make your, your kingdom here in Israel? And, and, and Jesus' vision is so much bigger and broader. The scope is to the ends of the earth. And it's beautiful. God's love. 
red, yellow, black, and white, precious in God's sight. God has made a way to win back lost people. God has made a way to bring lost people into His fold, into His kingdom, under His rule, under His authority. And the way is Jesus Christ. The gospel that we preach is it's finished. It's done. You don't have to strive anymore. You don't have to work anymore. You don't have to jump through religious hoops anymore. You don't have to be a holy person to earn heaven. You can be justified by faith in Jesus Christ. Declared righteous by faith, through faith, by just trusting in Him. He's done the work. He's finished the race. He died on that cross. And that's our message. That's our passion. And so he talks about the Spirit coming. And in the weeks ahead, we'll get into that. Um, what, what does it mean? What does it look like? The baptism, uh, he said, you'll be baptized with the Spirit. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Baptized in verse 5, with, you've been baptized with water. Uh, now you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. There, there's a big range of, of uh, meaning to that. I don't think there was just one meaning. Uh, I think that loaded into that statement was all the things that will be unpacked in, in, by his apostles, by the Apostle Paul later on through their own experience. But baptism means what? Baptism means immersion. The Spirit's going to immerse you. <laughs> You'll be immersed in God when He comes. Baptism is a way of identifying with something or somebody. To be baptized mean, means we're identified with God. Another meaning, perhaps, in this text is that when we become Christians, we're baptized into the church. We're, the, the Spirit comes and we're brought into the family of God, into the people of God. Another meaning, we, you know, as it goes on in the text, be baptized with the Spirit, in the Spirit, by the Spirit, means that God Himself, the Holy Spirit, comes to live in you and dwell in you. For what end? For mission. For what end? That you could learn again Jesus' words. For what end? That the counselor could guide you, could convict, could guide, could teach, could lead in this incredible calling of Jesus Christ to be the church. This incredible calling of Jesus Christ to be his witnesses in the world. We witness to Jesus' death. We witness to his resurrection. We, we witness to the apostles' teachings, which is the New Testament. We witness to our own experience of the risen Christ in our life, in our experience. We testify to what he's done how he saved us, how he's changed us, how he's transformed us. We are witnesses. Praise God. This, uh, this working through us, it's, it's phenomenal in, in many ways. <clears throat> As normal people who have been given a new life in Jesus Christ. Jesus is working through us in many ways today. He's working to tell people of His love. He's working through us to give people a cold cup of water in His name. He's working through us to feed the poor. He's working through us to clothe the naked. He's working through us as He worked in His day by the power of the Spirit, by the anointing of the Father, by the mission that the Trinity established from before the creation of the earth. He's working to overcome injustices in this world through His church. But the big thing that He's working on and through is the spread of the gospel. 
is the spread of the truth that God has come to save. The kingdom of God is coming, and you can have access to it even today through your repentance and faith. Jesus has accomplished the work. He's finished the work. It's done. Won't you receive the gift of God? The gift of salvation. The gift of forgiveness. He's working through us. He's prompting you, even now, to go. He's prompting you to reach your neighbors, to reach your community with the message. We can't save anybody by our power. We cannot lay out a religious path for them Do these 17 steps and you'll be saved. That's a man work. That's a human work. It cannot be done. But if we tell people, God has made a way. He did it through His Son on a cross. He shed His blood for the forgiveness of your sins. And if you would but trust Him, He will save you. That's our message. That's our proclamation. That's the hope that we bring in the world. That's the passion that God wants His church to carry. That's the truth that God wants His church to be about. Why else do we exist as a church but to do the work of Jesus Christ, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ? We we hear this text today in uh, in a very interesting time. I don't know what it was like in World War II. I don't know what it was like in World War I, you know, in in Europe. I don't don't know what it was like during the Spanish flu. All I'm experiencing right now is I miss my family. I miss my church family. I miss the laughter uh, of the body of Christ. I, I, I miss my friends. I, I know you're feeling the same way right now. It's hard. There's no way around it. it, it it's hard and it's challenging and it's frustrating. We, we come to this text as a people who can't meet. We've willingly uh, responded to the government's pleas uh, to uh, not meet. We w- willingly said to the government, okay. We, 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 we understand we want to protect lives as well. We will gladly, gladly, maybe it's not the right word, we, we, we will stop meeting. But it's hard. None of us like it. You remember a, a few weeks ago uh, when, when things started to, to, to happen, and we, we, I, I couldn't believe my ears when the stay-at-home order came or, or when we couldn't meet it, 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 as a public gathering. I, it just blew me away. I, I, I didn't expect that. I didn't see it coming, even though somebody told me a few weeks before, a, a retired police officer, watch out, uh, I think this is coming. I no way. I didn't believe him. But the first few weeks of, of, of you know, us not being to meet, meet publicly. Remember some of the memes on social media? Some of the sayings on social media? The church isn't closed. It's deployed. You know? The church isn't empty. We've been mobilized for mission. And I, uh, us, us pastors and elders here at Living Water, we got excited about that. At least some of us, you know, I did for sure, and some of the pastors. And, and I remember a conversation. Yeah, this is, this is so exciting. Like the church is out there and how many new groups are going to form? How many people are going to be inviting people into their home? Like, like, like people that don't know the Lord, they're going to be invited into people's homes and they're going to be meeting in new Bible studies in the first few weeks of this, this whole thing. It's like, yeah, start a Bible study. Use this curriculum. Do that. You know, Pastor Bo was, hey, start a community group. Do this, do that. It was, it was really exciting. And then, and then the less than 10 order came and then the stay-at-home order came and yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a real punch in the gut, you guys. Maybe you, maybe you remember that. And so right now, as a church, uh, we're abiding by the rules. We're, 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 we're staying at home. And right now, it feels, like, right, it feels like the church is on hold. That's what it feels like to me. It feels, feels like the church is on hold. Like, 
Like, we're, we're not meeting, we're not deployed, we're, 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 what are we doing? I know what we're supposed to be doing, we're supposed to be on mission. We're supposed to be going, and we're supposed to be deployed, and we're supposed to be out there loving our neighbors in Jesus' name, looking for bridges for evangelistic talks, looking for opportunities to serve in Jesus' name. Uh, but, man, we're just kind of stuck right now in this strange purgatory-like state. You know, some of you business owners, I, I, that, I know that's what you feel like. Like, you, you're just, you, you just can't, can't understand what's happening and why it's happening, and you're pulling your hair out, and I'm sorry. You know, a lot of people have been pondering, and I've been pondering myself, God, why are you doing this? Why are you letting this happen? And, and I came to the conclusion a few days ago, God might have a thousand reasons why he's allowing this to happen. God might have 10,000 reasons. He might have a million reasons, a million different lives that he's allowing this thing to stew and this thing to happen because he has a purpose in, in her life and he has a purpose in, in his life. He's allowing things to come about for his greater glory and his honor. I don't know. He hasn't told me. All I know is that we hear the word of God. The word of God comes to us today. We've opened up the word and we've heard clearly that he wants to work through us and he wants us to be his witnesses. And what do we do with that? I, I, think, I think this is a season where we stop and we ponder and, and we're able to pray, but we, we ponder and we, and we say, we should come to the Word of God and, and maybe this is a, a great divinely given pause where we ask the question is, it's a hard question, but we ask the question perhaps, have we been obedient to our God? Have we been doing the work? <clears throat> have we been doing what he has told us to do? Or have we been doing our own thing, the things that we want to do, and baptizing it as church? Have we, like the Israelites of old, spoken to God with our lips and said, yes, yes, but when push comes to shove, we say, no, no. We will not do what you want us to do, Lord. We have our own preferences. And, and let me maybe step on some toes a little bit. Because that's what preachers are good at. I've heard a lot of talk these last few weeks about I can't wait to meet together again. I've heard a lot of talk in, on Facebook and emails in person. Yeah, oh, I just, man, I can't wait to get together again as the church. I can't wait to get to see my friends again. I can't wait to get back to normal again. I can't wait so we can start worshiping together again on Sunday mornings. I can't wait till we start seeing our small group in person again, the Zoom thing. Ugh. I've heard a lot of lamentations about the church not being able to meet. But I haven't heard a lot of lamentations or frustration that our deployment has ended. I haven't heard a lot of people saying, I can't wait to get back on mission. I can't wait to start sharing the gospel again. I can't wait to start going to the nursing home again. I can't wait to start reaching out to my neighbors again. I haven't heard a lot of that. The fact of the matter is, a lot of churches have become places that Christians come for themselves. A lot of meetings are held because we like meeting together. People that look like us and act like us and have our same values. We like what we like. In God's word, we're not so sure of. Now, meeting together, <laughs> right? We're called to meet together. The edification of the saints comes through the, the body of Christ. Our encouragement comes through brothers and sisters. The, 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 the church is a beautiful thing. 
We're called the body of Christ because he's given us spiritual gifts. We are supposed to come together and serve one another in love and build each other up by his grace, by the enablements he's given us. The the, the church is a beautiful thing. Meeting together is a wonderful thing. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. I want to get back with my church family. But the mission of the church, hear me, brothers and sisters, the mission of the church isn't to meet. The mission of the church is to go. We are a commissioned people. We are a people sent. We are a people that Jesus works through to take his good news to the San Luis Valley and to Africa. The church, the mission of the church is not to meet. Now, I'm proud of our church, and I think hopefully in a good way. If pride can be healthy, I hope I have a healthy pride in our church. I love how this church serves one another. I love how this church prays for one another. I love how this church serves one another sacrificially and is there for one another. It's a beautiful thing. I love our church. But is it a healthy church, my brothers and sisters, if it's all about us? If we're talking about church getting back to normal and we never go, the fact of the matter is we're an unhealthy church, that we're missing the mission. If God has said, go, and we stay, We're being disobedient. We have a wonderful fellowship. I imagine you're part of a wonderful small group. Hopefully every one of you is tied into a great Bible study. Hopefully you have those mentors and those friends and those people close to you that that you just love talking to and you love going out to coffee with. But the mission of the church is that we would be witnesses to the lost. Church, if none of us have lost friends, if none of us have lost people in our lives that we're connected with, that we're we're praying for, that we're serving, what are we doing? The church isn't just about us. The church is for Jesus Christ in His glory. So maybe, maybe this season where God has said you can't meet, maybe it's a time for us to repent of our disobedience in not going. Now, just set aside for a second your fears of having to share the gospel. Set aside your your anxiety when it comes to you thinking, I'm not good. I I can't share the gospel. I'm not a missionary. I'm not an extrovert. And hear what God has said. He sent His very Holy Spirit into His church to do what the church can't do. He's empowered us and equipped us Whereas if you are an extrovert, you're a great speaker. You're somebody that could talk in front of any crowd or or carry a conversation with any group. You have all the gifts. But the truth is, if you don't have the Spirit of God in you, you cannot accomplish God's work. But you can be of the lowest education, somebody who has struggles in public, somebody who can never speak to a, a group of people. But if you have the Holy Spirit living in you, anything is possible. Set aside those fears for a moment. As we go through the book of Acts, we'll talk about the how to go. But just agree with me right now that God says go. Agree with me, church, right now in your spirit, in your heart, because you know it to be true that He's called you to be a witness for Him and His glory. Agree with me right now that His passion and His heart, that it's displayed in this simple text, Agree with me right now that maybe this hasn't been your heart. That you tried to make 
His will, something else. And make the turn today. Come to repentance today. As someone who loves Jesus, agree with me in your heart, agree with me in your, in your mind, agree with me in your desires that you want to obey Him again. Come to that point even right now where you say, Jesus, I'm yours. Maybe I've made church about me, and I'm sorry, Lord, it's not. Maybe, maybe, maybe tell him right now, Lord, I, I've made it about my passions and my preferences and my desires. You know, pastors, sometimes we step away from God's will and we love to see full houses. We love to see, see every seat filled and we love to see you know, people happy and we, we love to see that. <clears throat> but the reality is, is that we could have a full church, every seat filled, we could still be displeasing to God because we're not doing His will. <laughs> I, want, I want a full church, but I want a full church that is obeying their Lord. So if you need to repent today, maybe it's been months, maybe it's been years since you've thought about being on mission. Maybe it's been a long time since you left your holy circle of Christians and stepped out into the wildness of sharing the gospel with somebody. Do it. You know, see, what would put a big smile on Jesus' face if you started asking questions or you started praying prayers like, God, I, I feel inadequate because you are in and of yourself. God, I feel like I, I can't do it, it but I want to go. God, would you show me where I should go? God, would you show me? Would you point it out? Would you help me? Would you send me? All that I am, I, I don't know what I have to offer you, God, but here I am, send me. Here I am, your servant is listening Somebody that's been closed off for a long time starts praying those kind of prayers to God, starts being real with God and, and asks for forgiveness and starts hungering for the things that God hungers for. Jesus loves that. He can work with humble people who admit that they haven't walked with him. He can work with humble pe people who admit that they can't do it themselves, but who see a passage like this and read a passage like this and they realize what it means to serve Jesus, to give your life completely to him, to surrender your life completely to him and let him call the shots. Let him command. Let him uh, lead. Let him fill. God loves that. When people let go of their idols and let go of their fears and cast themselves fully on their Lord, God can do great things. God has done great things through the simplest of the people. The apostles of Jesus Christ were the simplest of people, and yet he changed the world through them because they said, yes, Lord, send me. There's a great scene at the end of this text in verse 10. Jesus had ascended, and, and, and at the end of this text, while they were gazing into heaven, Jesus went Behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? We know from Luke's gospel that these are angels. There's been a pattern in place. Why, do you, why, why are you standing there looking into heaven? This Jesus who is taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So Jesus is coming back. But how long are they going to stand and stare? Waiting. 
The, the implication of the angels speaking, how long are you going to stare at heaven waiting for the kingdom to come? <clears throat> the implication is, it's time to get busy. Go back into Jerusalem, wait for the empowerment. It's time to go to work. Until that last trumpet sounds, the mission of the church is to go. The mission of this church is to go in Jesus' name, by His authority, by His commission, by His power. We don't go in and of ourselves. We're under mandate. We're under orders. Our Lord has sent us. If He has said go, how can we not go? You know, preachers sometimes, man, we get, we get comments from people. And people love deep sermons. People love deep theological truths. They love to keep learning and they love to, to just get more and more information. They get spiritually fat. Churches that are popular oftentimes, man, they just keep going deeper and deeper. Or the other side of it, it's entertaining or it's, it's flashes and lights and, and fog machines or whatever. People make the church into what they want. Man, I just want to go deeper. I just want to get more truth. Oh, that, that made sense to me. Oh, I, I, I have deeper understanding. Or people want to, yeah, I had an emotional high, an experience of God today. Woo, praise God. The Spirit was there. And Jesus is pleading with His church. Go! I've told you what to do. It's not about you. The kingdom is coming. We've got to get people ready. The kingdom is coming. You can hear the trumpet in the distance and people are passing into eternal death without knowing the Savior and Lord who made a way for them to be saved, but they never heard. Jesus says, go. This is not a time to stand and stare up into heaven and say, man, is the kingdom near. The, the time is now to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. To bring the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the rule of God come. Reconciliation is possible now because of Jesus' finished work. Won't you repent? Won't you turn to Jesus? Won't you be saved? That's our message and that's our commission and that's our calling to go. Church, again, as I said last week, I hope things don't get back to normal. I hope this is a season where we are refined as, as by fire and we grasp again who we are and what we are to do. May we not drift back into normal patterns of disobedience and distance from our God. But may the Lord God Almighty lay His hand on us. And may He give us all of His power to do all of His will. May you and I say, Yes, Lord. Send me. Pray with me if you would. God Almighty, um, every one of us heard the good news in a different way. Lord, uh, some of us heard it through a preacher. Some of us heard, heard, it, heard it from our mothers. <clears throat> some of us heard it from family members or friends or at college or at, in the army. Lord, we, we give you thanks today for bringing the gospel to us. Lord, that when we heard the gospel about Jesus' finished work, about his redemption accomplished, his, his death on the cross for us, his shedding of his blood, thank you for the grace that we understood, Lord. You gave us the grace to, to believe and trust. You, you opened the eyes of our heart and we understood. And, and we said in, in our own way, I need that. By your grace, we were saved by trusting in you. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, <clears throat> give us your heart. Give us your heart for the lost. Give us your heart for your glory. 
Lord, honestly, we confess to you that we haven't wanted to go. We, We confess to you today in our homes there's been part of us that's been reluctant and we just apologize Lord we're, we're sorry Lord as you gave us the faith to believe give us the faith to believe again that you could use us give us the faith again the power to go give us the grace open our eyes to the opportunities all around us open our eyes Lord and, and, and help us to see the hungry the people that are seeking for you the, the people that just need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We ask this, Lord, that you give us the belief and the power and the, the energy and the strength. We ask so that you'd get the glory and you get the honor and you get the you get the praise. You'd become famous, Lord. You you would be glorified. Send us. Send us even now. Lord, show us in this time of pause, in this time of quarantine, in this time of stay at home. Lord, get us fired up. Show us a vision of where we're going to go when things open us and open up and, and who we're going to reach in your name. For you are worthy. You're worthy of all praise and you're worthy of our very lives. We give them to you again this morning. Thank you, Lord, for meeting with us. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Thank you for your, your word. We love you, Lord. Thank you for your church. We, we look forward to the day we can be together, but we leave that in your hands. We trust you. We love you. In your name, Jesus, bless your church. We love you. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for listening today. Thank you for participating. And uh, keep your eyes open for people, your neighbors, your friends. Uh, keep your eyes open for the needs in our community. Uh, be praying this week for the for our government. Be praying this week for good decisions, and be praying this week for for wherever you can serve and and wherever you can you can you can be the minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you. God bless. Thank you for watching this teaching from Living Water Bible Fellowship. We hope that this teaching was an encouragement and a challenge to you in your personal walk with Jesus Christ. Living Water is a Bible-based, gospel-centered church, and our mission is to lead people into a life-changing and ever-growing relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're interested in more about us as a church, links and contact information are in the description box below. But be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell as well. Thanks again for watching.